to describe a bit more of the public realm. Uh, the public realm, if you go back to the Noli plan, what you have seen already, streets, churches, cathedrals, gardens. So, so it becomes obvious. It's an ensemble of types, building types or space types. And if you look very closely at the Noli map and other people have done this, not me, they have cataloged the typology of the conditions in the Noli map. And the typology then becomes, if you like, a signal for uh, what makes that city, collection of types. One could do that for any city and have people have done that already. Um, the public realm is also a network. And I mentioned that before, it's a set of relationship between buildings and spaces. To make it simple, a city is not just buildings. And making just isolated beautiful buildings in a city don't make a beautiful city. It just makes a beautiful building. Um, so oftentimes mapping this, we look at relationships between buildings, between spaces, between buildings and spaces. And oftentimes, uh, what made this map may seem very simple, straightforward to you, but these are slow devices, architects and uh, architects mostly, device to understand the relationship. You know, how to show a relationship in a clear map. In this, in this drawing, you can see buildings in, in, in an axonometric form showing the larger public buildings, the public uh, monuments, and then smaller ones. And then you can see uh, how they're set up in the spaces of the city. And you can perhaps, by doing this, one could understand the relationship. Um, St. Peter's in Rome. Um, I'm showing Rome a little bit because you know, Many cities have done studies like that, but also the public realm, uh, in the case of Rome, becomes a very clear organizer of the city. It's not only where the big church or the monument is or the big spaces, but then it leads to a larger organization of the city, the big the boulevard, the axis, the end of the axis, and the end of the axis it spreads out in other directions. And in many cities that was done in the form that perhaps may be called Baroque, um, or things like that. It was done in Washington, D.C. It was done in, done in New Delhi. Uh, so the public realm is not just a free-flowing, uh, di diffuse, um, unclear, ambiguous set of spaces people go in and out. It can become and does become the organizer of cities. Um, now, some of the key architectural influences that shaped the design of Shangri-La, um, here just again, a small, I recognize a small picture, but, um, but it gives you a sense of uh, some of the feeling that Shangri-La uh, embodies through its design. Um, they include, uh, you know, starting images on the left, the Shehel Soton, uh, the magnificent, you know, 40 column palace and its reflecting pool in Isfahan, uh, which is up here, and then on the image on the bottom here, is the completed playhouse at Shangri-La uh, with its 75 foot long pool. So designed after that same influence. Um, and the image in the top uh, in the middle here uh, is the 17th century Shah Mosque in the central square at Isfahan, um, which is represented at Shangri-La by a massive mosaic uh, tile panel in our central courtyard, which you also saw in the television piece that was commissioned and made by the Isfani workshop. Um, so and at the bottom in the middle row here is the interior of the Taj Mahal and the Mughal Suite uh, Gallery, Doris's first commission. So again, it, I know it's a small uh, image, but you get a sense um, there kind of how these architectural influences shape the creation of Shangri-La. Now at the time of her death, she amassed over 4,000 artworks representing the cultural histories of a region that spanned over 44 countries from Morocco to Indonesia. And the items in the collection reflect periods of rule as well as periods of transition across Islamic worlds where multicultural and multi-denominational Islamic empires were being upended by forces of colonialism or imperialism. Uh, the collection is generally rich um, at the work of, in, with the work of what you might uh, describe as the, you know, quote unquote, gunpowder empires, the dynasty of the Mughals, the Ottomans, the Safavids, the Qajars. 
and particularly rich in Persian ceramics, textiles, and, and carpets from Central and South Asia. Uh, and also Ottoman Empire metalwork and manuscripts from the Safavid period um, and large scale oil paintings made during the um, reign of the Qajar dynasty in Iran. This is just a small set of um, images uh, of some of the objects in our collection. And you saw some uh, in that television piece. Um, now, you know, during that time after uh, Doris uh, passed away, that transition uh, from a private residence to a public museum required, you know, years of diligent curatorial conservation and construction work, you know, work that continues today. Um, we often think that, uh, you know, Doris, you know, given her wealth, wanted to buy everything that would last a lifetime. And it did. She spared no expense and it lasted her lifetime. And now we're uh, renewing uh, some of that work. Um, and we have conserved and cataloged objects, repaired structures, built new buildings, re replaced roofs, installed new telephone, Wi-Fi, fire and security systems, and, and a whole bunch more. Some of the notable accomplishments uh, in terms of the change, and I want to just include that in this you know, image here, uh, is the 2016 reopening of the Moroccan Room Gallery. Um, now, it's sort of, again, small image here. Uh, this used to be originally the bedroom of the, her first husband, James Cromwell. And now it's displaying contemporary artwork created during uh, one of our, our artist residency um, programs. Um, there's the 2018 transformation of a women's restroom into a gallery space, which you can see here is again, highlighting another um, artwork of, of contemporary art uh, that was done um, you know, not too long ago. And then uh, we're, uh, we've just refreshed um, you know, one of our uh, Syrian interiors. Um, to into a, uh, a gallery of Qajar era artwork, and that's here on the on the bottom left. And um, we continue to modernize our facilities in ways that you know essentially aim to broaden access uh, to museum spaces and the collection itself. So what is it has is a square This is like seventy-five feet on the side. So I made a seventy-five by seventy-five uh, square plan. And uh, the square is mainly uh, it, it is a main road. Uh, this is the main road, so it, it aligns with the main road here. So I got this seventy five feet by seventy five feet um, square, but uh, the Qibla direction uh, creates a thirty degree shift. So that's why the the entire prayer hall, like this prayer hall, is actually shifted at thirty degrees. But you don't feel it at times. Right. The reason you don't feel it is because of the circle that is at. So the circle kind of nullifies this this uh, movement. So once you have the square, and then you have this again. So if the circle didn't exist, then you would feel that uh, the shift, you know, the, you know, these corners and the and the larger space. If, if you don't think about that circle, but once you bring in that circular volume, which is this volume, uh, it immediately creates that feeling that you don't feel disoriented. So once you come in, and then you are immediately directed towards the direction of Qibla. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, and um, the idea was to, since there will be a lot of chaos around, it will be a dense neighborhood, how you can create a space which is a very quiet space, which is near the city, obviously, but it does not distract you in any way, that you are more concentrated in the act of praying when you're in here. So that was once also again another issue that the quality of prayer once you are here when you pray and the prayer is about this connection that you feel with the divine or with allah and how you how to create that uh, that connection and obviously it's, it is all our individual <laughs> connection uh, but the way i feel it is that there needs to be that the feeling of space and that um, that the space should have that quality and, uh, and, and, and these circles actually help them because these corner circles, which are open to sky, which also allows the rain and the light and the uh, air to pass through, is also, again, uh, helps to create that sort of light, which is diffuse light. You don't see the source of light, but you get the feeling that, that it, it has ample light in here. So Oita, I think, uh, also adds to the quality of spirituality. When you do not see the source of light, and that's also uh, something I learned from Khan, or looking into Khan's architecture, or many architectures that I've visited, is that uh, when the source of light is not revealed, 
but the light is kind of coming back to you from you know by washing it on the walls like they said that like over there look at that it gets the light right you get the sense of light but it, the, the, it's not visible anymore it's kind of glowing with that that quality and that gives you the quality of space uh, and, the, and the feeling of spirituality which i think is, is what is important uh, especially in a space which is about religion um, so so that is why uh, i mean initially i was thinking like you know if i close this entire thing off will it be too hot to be able to sit in here and um, so thinking about all those issues was also important and that's why the south side if i could you know, so you see the south is very open and uh, then cross right in before so that it allows the air to come in and since we do not get any air from the north side and i was also not sure what would happen in the north i tried to close it off it's not necessary to open it um, and if you see the circle is not absolutely in the center of the square it's slightly shifted towards this edge that's because i wanted to create a, a kind of a colonnade through which you can enter from the south so that's the road side the secondary road you climb up and then that's the uh, sort of a coordinated structure, which you will always find also in our many of our mosques, uh, in the Sultan Ahmed mosques, where we have a little coordinate. So that's also again another connection I try to create with the old mosques of the Sultan Ahmed, which are I think the most beautiful mosque architecture that we have in our region. Uh, 